This is HGT-119 Electricity 2 Motor and Controls Week 8 Covering Electric Motors and Controls The objective of this lesson for the student is to help them understand the purpose of electrical controls discuss the difference between relays and contactors develop the knowledge of the need for overload protection understand why capacitors are used with motor controls develop the understanding of the purpose for different types of motor controls improve the type of controls for the correct motor to gain the most efficiency and understand the wiring diagrams for different types of motors this week introduction covers the controls are used to give proper operation of electrical motors at variable conditions. By using controls, the motor can be started up, speed change, or stop automatically without an it could done it remotely. Because some controls are used to protect the motors or to increase its efficiency, a HVC technician must know how to troubleshoot, install, and service all types of motor controls. Many types of motor controls will protect the motor from operating unsafely and give the technician a warning of the unsafe condition. Therefore, motor controls come in two different categories, operator controls and safety controls. Knowing the difference between these controls will help the technician to troubleshoot the problems of motors. Terms we should cover this week and understand and the, uh, the learner should be able to look up to get a clarity of these terms is potential relay, current relay, capacitor, overload, current overload, thermal overload, contactor, relay, and motor protection devices. Relays and contactors are controls used to turn on motors and turn it off. A relay is an electrically operated switch. Many relays use a electric magnet, or sometimes we call it a coil, which uh, take electrical energy and convert it into magnetism. And this magnetism will pull in a plunger to call mechanical action. So relays are a device that is used to uh, stop the flow or convert the flow of current. So there's many different types of relays and today there is even solid state relays or electronic type relays that doesn't have any type of mechanical action. There's no moving parts. So there's less things to wear out and usually these electronic relays or solid state relays are more reliable and faster responding than the older type of electrical mechanical style of relays. A contactor is similar to a relay but is designed to handle higher amounts of current so it's used on larger types of motors. So these motors and relays and contactors have different purposes. So a relay is designed to handle um, low current such as anything less than 20 amps of current and contactors will handle higher amounts of current anything over 20. The difference between a relay and contactor usually contactors contacts are normally open and will close when the coils energize and relays could be a configuration of many different types of uh, contact configurations such as could be a single pole single throw a single pole double throw a double pole double throw or any combination of those um, contacts configurations to, to do work or to transfer or to divert uh, current to different areas parts of a contactor if we look at this and we see on the right you see the contacts which 
stops the flow or start the flow of current through it. There's a coil and the coil is basically used to create a magnetic field to pull the contacts in and the linkages and the mechanical apparatuses that are designed to allow current to um, break when the coil is de-energized. So it's the mechanical part of it and there's springs and other types of, of connections and things that will allow the, um, the contactor or relay to work automatically. These are some of the types of contacts you may find. The making and breaking of switches. The very top switch is a push button switch. Uh, the left shows open and the right shows close and to push the button down close the contact and to push the button down for the normally close will open it. The other types limit switches, pressure limit switches, temperature type of switches which is thermostats and of course uh, float level which is the very bottom. This is different types of contacts you find with relays. If we look at the very top, we see the coil, which is the curved lines connected together, which is the coil of the relay, and we see a single pole, single throw. So in other words, there's just only one power source coming in, and it's only one action. So when the coil energizes, it actually closes the contacts or the switch. The next one over is single pole double throw. Single pole is one power source coming in at C and it will switch from B to A when the coil is energized. So C to B is normally closed while C to A is normally open and when the uh, coil is energized it will change its position. Two others, the bottom left, you see a double pole, single throw, and to the other side is a single pole, double throw. And it works very similar to um, the switches, relays above it, but there is additional poles. So what you see, there's two separate power sources coming in on the double pole, single throw, and two power sources coming in at the double pole, double throw. Other type of relays you may find. Compressors. Hermetic or semi-hermetic compressors has internal windings in the shell of the compressor. Therefore, you need to have some type of external relay uh, to disengage the start windings of the compressor motor. Two types of relays are used for this purpose for very small type of fractional horsepower motors like used for domestic refrigeration systems or dehumidifiers will use a current relay and a potential relay is used for larger uh, compressors and this um, type of potential relay is used when there's um, over one horse of um, horsepower for the um, compressor. So current relays is used on smaller hermetic compressors to control the start windings during the start of the compressor. The contacts of the current relay is normally open and will close after the high initial amperage of the starting of the compressor is reached. However, when the compressor motor reaches about 80% of its RPM, the amperage will decrease and will allow the contacts to open again or reopen. A current relay requires the higher starting amperage to generate a strong magnetic field around the coil in the relay to pull in the plunger that is connected to the contacts to close the contacts. After the amperage is reduced, once the motor has reached operating speeds, the current and magnetic field is lowered and the plunger is no longer strong enough to keep the contacts in the closed position. At that point, the relay will open. 
potential relay is a little bit different and is used a, on larger hermetic and semi-hermetic compressors. The difference is that the potential relay has normally closed contacts and will open after the compressor has reached operating speed. Potential relay will use the inductance of the run windings into the start windings to create a higher voltage to hold the coil of the potential relay closed by um, keeping the coil of the relay energized uh, by the induced voltage of the start windings. Potential relays is sometimes called voltage relays because it requires the higher induced voltage of the start windings to operate it. This induced voltage can be as high as 50% higher than the applied voltage that is going to the compressor. So inductance is produced when the start windings take the magnetic field from the run windings and will cause it to generate a higher voltage. And that coil of the potential relay only senses that higher inductive voltage. So there's two different diagrams you see for that type of system. If you look on the left, it is a current relay, and that current relay is used to take out the, um, the windings. And if we look at the, um, the next one, on the right is a potential relay. And the potential relay uh, has a coil. It has three terminals going to it, and the three terminals are used for powering up the coil of the start winding, which is between 5 and 2, and terminal 1 goes to the start capacitor. The run com capacitor stays in the circuit at all times to feed, to give it more uh, efficiency. So for motor protection, according to the National Electric Codes, all motors require to have some type of motor protection to protect from electrical hazards. These types of motor protection can be internal protection or external protection. Motor protection can uh, protect the motor from high operating amperage and high operating temperatures. Some motor protection controls can protect the motor from both high temperatures and high amperage. So there's many different types of motor protection. Fuses and brakes are used to protect the motor from high operating current because motor pull high starting amperage during the initial starting, a special type of fuse or breaker must be used. A time delay or a slow blow fuse will be used to allow the motor to start without blowing the fuse. A breaker will be rated for a HVAC system and because these type system pull higher current and things like that during initial starting the breaker has to be designed to be able to take the inrush uh, current during startup and without tripping the breaker. Thermal overloads are devices that can be installed on motors or compressors to sense the temperature of the motor. When a motor is overloaded it can cause stress on the motor and cause heat to build up and can damage the motor. Also when a motor or compressor is pulling higher than normal amperage, the motor will heat up from the higher current flow through its windings. Many larger hermetic and semi-hermetic compressors will use an internal thermal overload embedded in its windings to sense directly the heat energy from the windings. So therefore, it's uh, more sensitive than an external type of uh, relay or uh, overload that will um, take out the windings by sensing directly the temperature. Service disconnects are uh, designed to for a technician to be able to turn off the power to the equipment to be able to service it. So service disconnects are used to de-energize the electrical power source to the HVC equipment so that the technician can service the equipment without having electrical safety concerns. 
According to the National Electrical Code, all electrical HVAC and refrigeration equipment must have a disconnect switch. This disconnect switch can be fused or non-fused, which means that the disconnect can have a fuse inside of it, or it can come without a fuse if other uh, overload protection is um, part of the system and circuit. Also, the service disconnect switch are designed to be used outdoors for outdoor use, or it can be designed for indoor use. So they are designed differently to be able to handle the different types of current flow. So to summarize this week's assignment and information, motors are used to do work. However, all motors need some type of way to operate it correctly and safely. That's where um, safety controls or overload protection is needed or contactors or relays are used to cycle it on and cycle it off. Split phase motors need a control to disengage their start winding such as centrifugal switch, current relays, or potential relays. There are different types of starting components for motors and the size of the motor will determine which type of control will be used. All motors need some type of motor protection to keep it safe from dangerous conditions. Service disconnects are used to disengage the power to a motor while a technician is working on the motor or equipment. Large motors require motor starters, which is a combination of a motor protection and starting device.